We are not in the basement. No, but it's cold. What? <laughs> it's very bright. Still, it's it's as cold as the, it's these cement floors. It is. It's the nice cement floors. Mm-hmm. We're at No Brow Coffee in Salt Lake. Yeah. And the address is... Uh, 3 315 th- East 300 South. Let me write that down. For, former home of Craft Sabbath. Mm-hmm. This, this is where my uh, my craft business got started. Aww. If you're not familiar with what a coffee shop is... Yes. It's like a... Um, like a daytime bar or something? I don't <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually been it's, to one of these. It's kind of like that, yeah. It's kinda where you get like energy that. drinks that don't come in little red bottles. Okay. <laughs> you make the nighttime bar stuff go away. I'm just... <laughs> daytime bar, nighttime oh, bar. Oh, my God. What a great slogan for a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> we make the nighttime bar stuff go away. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's get this guy, uh, underway, and then we can get started. Uh, we want to thank our uh, sponsors, uh, PC Laptops. Uh, lifetime desktop parts and labor warranty. Dan, the laptop man, I'm concerned that he will soon take over the world. Luckily, he's using his forces for good. Mm-hmm. He's nice. It's Although his I matrix. Concern. We're all playing in it. It's exactly. <laughs> uh, Dr. Volt's Comic Connection, 2043 East, 3300 South. And uh, I, I think they're still doing the back, uh, uh, the old uh, issues. They're, bla- they're blasting out the back issues. I think they're still doing that. <laughs> I was so. doing that all night last night. You were? Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. That's terrible. Sorry, folks. We uh, that's you can't hear that, but our headphones are are not working well. Huh. So let's, let's see what happens that's if we all right. do that. All right. Uh, woo. Uh, we'll I'll just, just I'll just keep my hand by the power switch. We'll just so. occasionally do that. Flip it yeah. on. Flip it off. So that. weird. Uh, <laughs> as long as it's not on the podcast yeah, itself, it that's, should be fine. That's all I, I care. Can cut about it out either cause, way because we're okay with. Uh, it just it adds another thing for me to figure out today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> not not me. It makes me feel like people have lined us up against the wall. Indeed. Bada, 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 bada. Uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, so mm. there's that, and uh, I want to thank uh, Xfinity, uh, Utah on Demand, Salt Lake Alternative Geek Show. That's how you watch us on TV. They gave us yet another. It it's a step another in the level. <laughs> another level. Um, but it it looks really good. And finally, it, for a change, it's it's uh, uh, there's there's a, a blueberry thing. There's uh, mm-hmm. uh, David Hasselhoff on fire for yeah? you. Yeah. There's there's <laughs> graphics, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's pictures it, on a TV show, which is a novel that's idea. That's weird. Bri- Brian took it to the next level and he then did. kept on going through he five did. levels above that. Indeed. So what you're saying is, getting rid of that one influence may have been a good thing. Yes. Things in the new year for the video side of the podcaster are uh, looking definitely. I know getting rid of that influence in my life last year worked out pretty damn Indeed. good. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, th- so thank you to, uh, to, to, to those folks. Uh, text the word geek to 53318. You get updates from Tony. Yeah. Uh, join us on our Facebook. Join us on our Twitter. And uh, we'll let you know what's going on. Also, uh, thank you to the Beam Me Up Scott Tees for. <clears throat> I got your cold. I don't have a cold, dude. For, for the theme song, uh, they are playing on the uh, 21st of January at the basement on twenty on 24th Street in Ogden. The basement, not your the basement. How come they're not ever playing in Salt Lake? Because uh, they're from Logan. They're from Logan, actually. So it's probably so a ways for them. Why don't they move away. to a better place? So uh, <laughs> I went to school there. Shut the fuck up. Uh, the Beam Me Up Scotties. Logan does them. have the best Dairy Queen. And yell at them uh, to do the Geek Show thing. They do. All right. Can I uh, make an announcement before we... Well, we're in, we're going to introduce a panel. You want to start with you? Yeah, of course. All right, <laughs> Shannon, first person on the panel. I'm on the scissor today. Let's see. Let's see what you got here. We got some. Uh, What's a this scissor? is your uh, this is your uh, prescription uh, medication. Yeah, his prescribed Robitussin. <clears throat> Those of you are, that are in Utah, you know how crappy the air is. Cherry Those sauce. of you who are not here uh, should be glad. We we're like always in the top five. Yeah, it's chock full of codeine, it's bro. It's chock full of codeine. Yeah. yeah. And codeine. And uh, you're going to be passing this out, right? No, it's mine. Pass it out. Or Why do you have the out? shot needle? Why is the shot needle there? <laughs> He's actually they gave it to me. I like to. <laughs> I like to squirt it in my mouth. Yeah, so so he can be like a little baby bird. I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm confused by the lights. Yes. And the sounds in my ears. Mm-hmm. And the car's driving by outside. And the funny feeling in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's that's been that way since he was 14. That's true. <laughs> So I'm just going to I keep hitting it. It keeps staying there. So <laughs> it will my go voice away. sounds it will go away. <laughs> my voice sounds terrible, doesn't it? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. A little off. Not terrible. It's not too bad. Yeah. It's not uh, Norman Feld bad. I'm I'm fighting that too. It is the bad air, I believe. Fuck you, Utah air. Yeah. Take Jimmy that. Martin, Slug Magazine. Go to slugmag.com. Hello. And uh, say hi to Jimmy. Say hi. Jeff Weiss, film critic to the world. Mm-hmm. Also known as Darth Weiss. Darth Weiss. <laughs> yes, because of his breathing, because of the bad air, too. Uh, yeah. I like it. I like uh, it. Jimmy and I co-host a program also on Xfinity <laughs> called called The Big Movie Mouth Off, which you can also find 
Xfinity, uh, Utah On Demand, Utah on Demand SL, SL Alternative. SL Alternative, big movie mouth off. Yeah, our, our best and worst program is going to be up shortly. Best yeah. and worst of the year? Yeah, oh, of, cool. tw- of 2010. If, if we did a 2011 list, it would be blessedly, blessedly short. <laughs> And I'm thanks to everybody saying. for coming out to the Green Hornet screening that we had. That was oh, that we, that we did with Geek Show, yeah, Geek yeah. Show, and uh, big we, movie. We want to get uh, get you guys uh, to review that for us. Sure, uh, coming up, uh, Lee George Cade. Hi, kids. Artist extraordinaire. Yeah, tired artist extraordinaire. But uh, the air isn't affecting me at all. I grew up in Southern California, San Fernando Valley, uh, big in the seventies. So I'm used to chewing my air in the seventies. Mm. In the seventies, you know, when when you couldn't see the streets in front of you because Soupy. they didn't have the uh, emissions controls that they have now in Southern California. But still, it's nice that uh, people in Utah care so much for their humongous families that they won't do anything to regulate the air quality. Oh, that's, no. You know, the last well, thing we need. We don't need to save the earthly. No, that's true, because they that's what Heavenly Earth. Father's there for. No, because it's going to be gone soon. <sighs> I don't we'll, believe that. We'll the be earth, our the earth will be here for a long, long time. The rest of us will probably be gone. Well, the, the, the good people will be gone on their own planet, so... <laughs> Oh, 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 you mean in 2012 when the, yeah, the hollow year. crust of well, the earth opens up and all the people fall into it? That's We're fine. You know what? If you want Grimleys of the hollow crust opening up, just uh, Ooh. send us an email. Ooh. I would like that very Ooh. much, actually. Ooh, by the way, Grimleys. Lee George Cape, Planet of the Apes Grimleys. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to talk the wife into that now for a couple of months, uh, among other things, you know. So, uh, Planet of the Apes, Grimley's, sex, either one. She just <laughs> looks at me like I'm some sort of alien. You choose one or the other, buddy. Yeah. One or the yeah. other. Yeah, Dr. Zayas or... But, um, so Your website? Yeah, we'll spell it? Get, uh, G-R-I-M-M-L-E-I-G-H-S dot com. I got a commission for you, too. Really? Yeah. I uh, want the whole cast of The Desperate Housewives. You know, I, oh, yeah. I was going to do the cast of Desperate Houseplants, but it's a whole other thing. Gary <laughs> Jackson! Oh, uh, well, uh, our uh, designated driver and producer, uh, Too Tall Tony. Tony. Triple T! Triple What's T. Uh, the, I always skip the, the producer. Utah's biggest Green Hornet, uh, Green Lantern, Green Lantern fan. Lantern, and by biggest, I mean is tallest. He's tall! Uh, <laughs> so, and Gary Jackson! Oh, hi, how you doing? Uh, huh. Good to see you. I did uh, it in the right, right order now. X96.com, <laughs> Monday through Friday, 6 to 10. That's all I care about. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a show, you assholes? That's, hey, hey um, <laughs> I, I, I do have a message for uh, your your co-host, Bill yes. Allred. Yes, um, yes. I was I, I get to listen to some of your best ofs on my way home, <laughs> and Bill was talking about finding a fudgery in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there was a fudgery here in Salt Lake City at one time at Trolley Square. Oh, there was. Right. oh and that was right. my wife's very first job. The fudgery oh. at the fudgery. Your wife was a fudger. She was, and, and at times she did pack fudge, but that was a backroom job. <laughs> well, and now she's a mother, so. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a mother fudger. Oh, okay. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was counting. It was the setup. <laughs> Damn scissor. I was playing straight, man. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's get this underway. How are you guys? Other than you can't stop shitting. I, um, I'm concerned about that. Well, no, I did on purpose. <laughs> I can breathe out of my nose. That's nice. Yeah. G- yeah oh, that's right. You yeah, had surgery. surgery. Yeah. Surgery. I've never been knocked out on a. Uh, anesthesia before really it is fucking trippy oh it's yeah, awesome it is, isn't huh? it oh he was like all right i'm gonna give you this stuff and you're gonna fall asleep and next you know you'll be in the next room and i was sitting there waiting like is my eyes gonna close mm-hmm. no just a fucking snap and i woke up in the next room and i like and i was awake and the nurse like holy shit are you all right mm-hmm. and i was like yeah i'm good <laughs> are we done like, yeah you're good and I'm like, <laughs> you're good get cool. out of here <laughs> when, I, when i had my uh, my scope to check my stomach out during the summer, it it was kind of the same thing. Yeah, it, I felt like I was roofied. They're like, count backwards from five, five, four, and then why does my throat hurt? <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, I did the same thing when you know when they split me like that, a trout. That, 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 <laughs> that wasn't the tube, Lee. That wasn't the tube. No, that was Doctor Kuahara. They laid me down on the on the slab, you know, and there was uh, a piece of. Uh, wood or table or something that had your arm hooked up to it okay and he says well we're gonna we're gonna get you uh we're gonna you get you a piece of wood yes <laughs> table i don't know that surgery a table a board? Board? Well, you gotta remember it was a long time ago <laughs> Home Depot. it was it was that guy with the bear head from true grit walking <laughs> are, <laughs> are, are, either, uh, are, are are right, either boys time down that's right yes. are we either of you in that lymphoma. <laughs> so uh <laughs> are you in need of medical assistance so he says uh he says now i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna get this going and it'll it'll take you pretty quickly and I went, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. You don't know my liver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just count backwards. Before your liver had really been broken in there. Count here. backwards from 100. <laughs> and it's like the old Bill Cosby routine. 100, not, nah, and you're gone. Oh, it creeps me out that stuff like that exists. That oh, I want it. <laughs> So weird. I tell you what, if if I, I would do a Michael Jackson thing, I would. I, was I would say, use that. Jackson died that way. Exactly. I would do that every <laughs> night. 
to get to sleep because because I cannot go to sleep. I know how my cousin Michael felt. I can't Michael go to sleep felt. either. Sometimes I take a fucking walk. You realize yeah. how hard it is to get a prescription. You know how hard it is to get a prescription for anything with the last name of Jackson anymore. It is. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always been That's hard for ridiculous. me. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. You it. should send word to his prison. <laughs> I'm maybe, telling you, I would do it if I could. Maybe I could Conrad do Murray has some kicking around in I, his car. <laughs> first, he had to stop doing Pepsi commercials, and now we can't get a prescription. I seriously would. T- I would totally have that stuff if I could. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's begin. Uh, I thought we did. This just in. What have we been doing? This just in. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, yes. News on the casting of the Alien prequel. Wait, I'm getting it. It's canceled. All right. Oh. Uh, see, I had this whole story about. Their female leads for the Alien prequels. Mm-hmm. That, it was, uh, uh, they're having right, but, Gerard Depardieu play the Alien Queen. But yeah, no, they're, they just, they're still making it, but it's not a prequel anymore, right? Yeah, uh, Prometheus. Well, here's, here's what happened. Uh, it, it was all going back and forth about how Ridley Scott wanted this uh, this little known actress to to be the star of the of the Alien prequel. Oh, they you mean sort of like an unknown sort of actress was in the original Alien, yeah. Sigourney Weaver? Huh. Crazy, I know. Hmm. Uh, so he had this, uh, her name is Numi Rapace. She's Scandinavian. Oh, it's the girl from the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Is that who yeah. that is? Oh. Yeah. Okay. She's going to be in Sherlock Holmes, too, I think, also. Oh, is she? Yeah. yeah the, the, it's, right. it's kind of funny. They're calling her little known. She's little known here. <laughs> <laughs> She's got three huge blockbusters, European-wise. <laughs> so he wanted her to be the female lead character, Elizabeth Shaw. They were they were going to get it all. It sounded like a great idea. It mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, how that alien <laughs> derelict got there for Sigourney Weaver to discover it in the, fir- uh, discover it in the first movie. Okay, sounded it's like a great of idea. Eggs. Fox kept saying, "We really would like a name in there, a name in there, please. Could you get us a name? How about Charlize Theron? How yeah. about uh, <laughs> how about?" And they had a whole list. Ang- Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah, and you know somebody like that. We want someone big like that. And uh, and so uh, they they all just kept fighting until eventually. Ruth Buzzy. Until eventually. <laughs> She's still around. Jo- jo- no. Joanne <laughs> Worley. Rip jo- Taylor. Um, <laughs> and they kept fighting, and they kept fighting until now. You're just not going to get an Alien prequel. Yeah, beca- and why? Because Fox is a bunch of fucking retards. I thought yeah. it was because Fox was just concerned there might be a good Alien movie. Yes, exactly. After yeah. the Aliens versus Predator debacles. Yeah. But some good has come from it. Um, Ridley Scott and uh, Damon Lindelof. He's mm. from Lost. One of the Lost uh, guys yeah. are getting together to uh, to do this thing that came out of this now called Prometheus. And uh, Damon Lindelof says, uh, uh, while Alien was indeed the jumping off point for this project, out of the creative process evolved a new grand mythology and universe in which this original story takes mm-hmm. place. Uh, the Keen fan will recognize strands of Alien's DNA, so to speak. Hmm. Well, it's not like the skeletal remains of the space jockey or <laughs> intellectual property of anybody's. That's true. That's H.R. Giger. But, so. the, uh, but the ideas tackled in this film are unique, large, and provocative. I couldn't be more pleased to have found a singular tale I'd been searching for in a world flooded with prequels, sequels, and reboots. I was incredibly struck by just how original this vision for the movie is. So yeah, I only like sequels and reimaginings now. <laughs> yeah, it's something I can understand. It doesn't frighten me. I'm uh, just I have another update on the story. Yes. Ruth Buzzy? Yes. Still alive. Still alive. Thank you. <laughs> just living with Yay. her Taylor. I just am surprised that the, of all the things to cut out the project would be who would be the lead actress. It seems like there would probably be more behind that. It was, uh, there might have been. Um, Maybe he just thought a, a prequel was not the best uh, way to do it. Or weird <laughs> considering how they managed to shoot first class without really anybody that's got huge star power to it. But you know, I still don't uh, believe Mr. that Kevin movie's Bacon? being made. Kevin Bacon? Who's he? Fucking, you ever seen Footloose, dude? No. See the guy in that computer commercial? <laughs> yeah. That, guy, that commercial's funny. Wasn't he in War Games? Oliver Platt, come on. Yeah. The, the, the mega blockbuster draw of Oliver Platt. <laughs> <laughs> He's box office gold. That's it's, what he is. I, I hear there's supposedly a trailer, though. Yes. Really? It, it, it's playing supposedly it's, before the Green Hornet. X-Men. And Tell me. Was, we, we had about seven uh, trailers before our screening of the Green Hornet. I kept going, come on, X-Men. Come on, X-Men. And we didn't get didn't it. Get it. No. <sighs> we didn't get it. What did oh. we get? Tell us. Oh, but we got Battle Los Angeles. Battle Los Angeles what and Sucker that? Punch. It looks awesome. Well, well Sucker, Sucker Punch I can't wait for. Sucker, Sucker Punch, Punch looks cool. I've seen that trailer amazing. twice. I don't know what it's about. It's about uh, Kick ass ass-kicking women. chicks who beat up uh, Nazis while riding on dragons, and yeah, every once in a while they stop to have a show tune. <laughs> uh-huh. Flying World War II planes. Do they, do yes. they uh, uh, have a pillow fight or take a bath at any point? Z- no, Z- but what? they they do spin kicks in slow motion. Yeah. Oh, well, what what yeah. I got, what That's I garnered was that Zack Snyder drank a bunch of beer and watched 
Terry Gilliam and uh, Sky Captain and went, hey, I got an idea. Certainly. You know what they said, but wait a second, I can get bigger dragons because I'm a, I'm a WB Wonderkin. <laughs> yes, uh, and then, was it Battlefield Los Angeles? Uh, to me, looks like um, a version of Skyline that's appropriate. But good. And that it, might be good, yeah. Just, going to the Strauss brothers and going, uh, hey, fuckers, this is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let me uh, fix this movie for Who's you. in it? Um, Aaron Eckhart. Yeah, and Eric, Aaron Eckhart, oh. Michelle Rodriguez. And Numi Rappaport. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. I hear she's very good. It looks like uh, a sci-fi Hurt Locker. Really? Um, yeah. It, it looks, looks really, really cool. blowy yeah, up. Yeah, the trailer I saw looked really fun. But you know the trailer I'm seeing that I want to see the movie for, I don't think I'm going to get to see in the United States. What's that? What? Yamato. Yeah, know, yeah Star Space Blazers. Battleship yeah. Yamato. Yeah. Uh, I know. Slide action Sorry. Star Blazers. And every time I see the trailer, I, I want to oh, sing God, a song. Oh, God, it gets me giddy. <laughs> you'll see, you know, you'll, you'll see it. You won't see it in Come the theater. Come on, buddy. I won't. No, don't be like that. Lee, 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 let's smuggle in someone's uh, suitcase and go to Japan. Let's do that. I'd fit the suitcase. <laughs> okay. you see, you'll, you'll see it. You just won't see it in the theater. Yeah. No, I want to see it with Jeff holding hands. Yes, and we like, will. Like, and we'll giggle like we did like during girls. Naked City. We should hey. hound the, the film society to, to bring it. They probably would. Uh, Listen, yeah. with, with like Netflix and all of the streaming and everything and a nice big screen and a good sound system, it'll be That's like true. that. You know, we have to watch it at Carrie's house. <laughs> yes, I, I did get to see that <laughs> thank Shaolin you for volunteer- zombie movie on yeah. Netflix. That was pretty uh, thank cool. Thank you for volunteering your basement for that, Carrie. <laughs> Listen, when it's available, I promise okay. you. We've got to hire a couple people to sit behind us and kick our chairs. We'll have get- sushi. Yeah. <laughs> Can I'll I get that? A couple I'll, of kids I'll, in there. I'll <laughs> borrow, I'll <laughs> borrow <laughs> a child. Maybe Joe can loan me his kid. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, have, that, good, I'll have that hillbilly yes. from uh, Sheep Rave Oregon fly down so yeah. you can make commentary from the back row. <laughs> this guy during the Star Wars special editions. Oh, poor R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there just... goes the Death Star. <laughs> Ooh. That down there is a big explosion. Not, Dang. Not... <laughs> Did you know that Blast Star Death Star was going to get blown up? I didn't know that. No. Not me. I'm hoping for that old couple. Where the old guy doesn't have his hearing aid turned up enough, and the wife has to explain everything to him. <laughs> now no, you see, he's, he's Japanese and a fighter he's, pilot. He's the Wolverine. What? He's the Wolverine. Is that why they're not speaking English? <laughs> I thought he shot him. Why is he healing? <laughs> he's the Wolverine. It's, it's really, you know, with the technology and these ideas, your home theater is complete. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> we should start a service. <laughs> so tell us about Green Hornet. Surprisingly good. Okay. Um, well, because you went in with low expectations. Well, well, okay. The expectation yeah. started when the studios, the the rumors came out that the studios saw his first cut of it, and they pretty much looked at Michelle Gondry and said, "What the fuck have you done?" And mm-hmm. they were not happy about it. Hmm. But then Vice had heard, you know, what about a month or so ago that that they test screened the it. The next ones came out. Yes. And, and suddenly audiences decided they liked it. They didn't yeah. hate and it. Then, yeah. And then suddenly Sony and Columbia went. Oh my God! Apparently, maybe we better put some uh, push behind this movie because we might actually have a hit on our hands. Get him yeah. in a Del Taco commercial. Well, and <laughs> you know what I enjoyed about? I mean, Seth Rogen. Like when I heard he was cast, I was like, "Really, is the Green mm-hmm. Hornet?" But the way they take the character, like he's kind of an idiot. Um, he's not like he, he doesn't really kick ass throughout. I mean, Kato. Good God, that kid can kick ass. Well, I, I really in the original Green Hornet wasn't it that way? Yeah, it, it, exactly. was, it was. It was. Yeah, that's what people forget. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up, Carrie. Bruce Lee. Because everybody keeps treating the Green Hornet like it's this unparalleled source material. It comes from pulp comics, pulp and stories, a, and a radio show. And an old radio show from that the thirties. Yeah. Were knockoffs of The Shadow, mm-hmm. a, essentially, and Doc Savage. Well, and then, and then they made a crappy 1960s TV show out of it. the same people who did Batman. the same yes. people who did Batman, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Because, I mean, they had, they had a couple crossover episodes. It was, yeah. it was a spinoff. Grant, Grant Williams, is that who it is who played uh, Green I, Hornet and Britt Reed in it? Sure. I, I think. And, <laughs> wow, Seth Rogen really had a lot to top in that regard. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He kept saying, he says, uh, I didn't think anyone cared about the Green Hornet, but it turns out pe- there are people who do. There's you know what? Care about everything. You know what, yeah. Seth? I got news for you. It's a very small number yeah. of people. Yeah. You should have just did what you wanted to do. Yeah, there oh, there are does. people that are he upset does. about the Showgirl sequel. So oh, come on. I mean, it's very Seth yeah. Rogen comedy in it. Mm-hmm. But what's the, the brilliance of the movie where it comes from is actually Michelle Gondry. I yeah. mean, there's the, certain... the, the guy who directed uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes. Yeah, and there are the fight scenes, the way they're choreographed, the way they like they use these effects that stretch out the screen, and, and it's really cool. And there's one sequence where the villains are kind of spreading the word about the Green Hornet. And so, and there's, it starts with one camera shot, splits into two to four, eight, sixteen. But it's not; 
it splits off from the same shot. Like I watch it, and I don't know it's, how he did it, it. it. It's it's not like twenty four where it looks like four or five uh, TV. Sounds sc- like that shampoo t- commercial. T- 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 TV screens. <laughs> I, I still have no idea how he did some of this because you follow a character from one screen to another screen to another screen to another screen. He, they had to choreograph the shit out of that yeah. scene. I, I don't know how they did it. Yeah. It's really just brilliant it's choreography. And, and, and when film geeks like us are going. Wow, I have no idea how he did this. Then yeah. kudos, sir. Excellent shot. So, so it's gonna bomb. I think it'll do well. For, I mean, for a January movie. Uh-huh. Well, as I, we record this, it's uh, Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I've seen it twice. I've seen it with an older, less hip crowd that was sort of not sure what they wanted to do with it. And then we saw it with our really geek centric crowd on Thursday, and they ate it up with a the yeah. liked it. Yeah, well, it, it, it's not like it has a lot of competition right now either. Oh, yeah. God, right. no. Well, that's for the witch yeah. and the dilemma. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. true. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you're give, let's see, what did you guys give it? I, know I, I, I gave it two and a half. It, yeah, I gave it uh, three. It, it, it's a little too long and starts to take itself too seriously, but but Jay Chow, the Korean star who, Korean pop star who takes steps into Bruce Lee's shoes, he's good. Yeah. He's someone to watch. My biggest disappointment was, was uh, Christoph Waltz, and it wasn't his fault. I mean, hmm. he's the Nazi from Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. And he just didn't really have anything to do. Yeah. And that's where I kind of felt bad, because you're sitting there, you've got this amazing oh. actor with you, and you're not giving him anything. Well, he's no Nick Cage. I, that's true. I, 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 I almost <laughs> think Nick, Nick Cage would have been is. more interesting, actually. Yeah, I, uh, I told this story uh, on the radio show, but uh, I brought it in for you guys. Because <laughs> Nick Cage was originally cast as the villain. Yeah. As Chudnovsky. In, Chudnovsky. The, in the Green Hornet. New York Times did a story uh, looking at this thing. And, uh, yeah, he was originally the villain. And uh, here's, here's what happened. Uh, uh, Michael uh, Michel Gondry. Mm-hmm found one element of Cage's portrayal a little too disconcerting. <laughs> I love this. For reasons known only to Nick Cage, he insisted that the character have a Jamaican accent. <laughs> <laughs> what? Down by the beach. <laughs> what? Godry said, I was quite relieved when he announced he was no longer interested in the part. <laughs> you know, like... Because nobody had the balls to tell Nick Cage, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> But there, there are some really wacky elements to the movie, so I don't think it'd be completely out of place. I, it'd, no. be, it'd be terrible, but yes. But well, in, in this, and here's the scene in Green Hornet where you really see how underused and and how little there is for Christoph Waltz to do. I'll spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. He's in a bar scene, a nightclub scene, confronting James Franco, and James Franco fucking owns him. Yeah. In that part, James Franco is so good. I, I kind of. Almost wish James Franco had been Chudnovsky, to be honest, because <laughs> yeah, he get he gets it, and I just don't think Christoph Waltz got it. No, and and I I, I kind of lay blame to Gondry to for not utilizing him, yeah, not, and possibly not, the script, not kicking script him in the too. ass a bit more, and you know, bring it out. You know, he's got it in him. Shit, mm-hmm. watching Glorious Batches again. Then he yeah, won the Oscar. You know, but you know, the, Jesus. they won an Oscar. He did. He's a big man. He's a big, big star. <laughs> big star. <laughs> but at the same time, some directors are afraid to tell certain actors. I mean, like, he didn't tell Nick Cage, what are you doing with a Jamaican accent? He didn't say anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. He was just happy that the guy quit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I imagine if he's not willing to tell Nick Cage, you're an idiot, he's not willing to tell Christoph Waltz, Academy Award winner. Yeah. Yes. Maybe you should do this. Yes. Yeah, he's made you, a little non-confrontational. You, sir, need to have some scenery between your teeth. He's a very quiet guy. I know that for sure. So I could see that. But he I can do yeah. it. I saw that thing where he, uh, they, he filmed a version of that. La, 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 la. Never mind. What? The what? You know that. Here, give me a sip. <laughs> oh, give me, me. It's mine. Give me some of your uh, cor- uh, cough syrup there. Ah, uh, blueberries. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I just blueberry, didn't I? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I just cherry tussened is what I did. <laughs> cherry tussin. <laughs> it tastes great. No, uh, never mind. Yeah. It's it's great. The moment's passed. Less, less filling. <laughs> cherry tussin. That, I'll bet that right. serves up tastes like blueberries. Uh, let's see. We got uh, yeah, the hump dink. I'm hesitant to talk even even talk about, about the uh, the Batman movie uh, Batman? casting because there's just nothing known about it really. Yeah. No. It's, it's all speculation. It's they, they've listed like every actress that's available in the age of 23 to I 42, know. <laughs> it, 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 ex- except for Natalie Portman. She's apparently out of the running. Well, she's already banging Thor and what? Uh, well, yeah, that's what I hero. said. Did, did, did you hear my favorite Thor joke of all time? The, the, the trailer played in Minneapolis, which has a huge Swedish population, as a uh, documentary. 
Can you believe geeks are upset because we we have yet to see Thor in his helmet yet in a, yes, in I a can. trailer? Jesus. Can you believe that? Jesus shit? Well. retarded. I and know. From I what I hear, luscious locks. If, Honestly, I'm glad I haven't seen him in the helmet. I have plenty of helmet. I don't want to see him in the helmet. I like him without. I want to see him in the helmet. <laughs> I, I, I do too, but you're like me. In the helmet. But you but you're like me, Lee. You like to see helmets that have wings on them. I do. <laughs> I, I've got a collection. <laughs> that that picture of Cap. Did you oh. see the picture of Cap with his wings? Yeah. And oh. did you check out his package? I told you so. I told <laughs> you so. Did I you see his so. package? <laughs> yeah. I like that it was a helmet and not like a cowl. Yeah. Cap. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, that was it, cool. Uh, Marcus, I think, said it best. It looks like that could exist in the real yeah. world. Yeah, that's absolutely. A, that's a great um, uh, and, and by the way, Marcus, uh, if you actually read comics in Captain America Reborn, they did that design. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just he's saying. Dangerous. He's cute. You know, he's cute that way. Uh, and the Don't Spider-Man. Don't fight with him. The Spider-Man. Oh. The, the I love that suit. You like that costume? Oh, I love it. I, I don't like the so gloves. Badass. Other than that, it's perfect. Yeah, I, I didn't it, like the gloves that much either, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah. The gloves. I'm not I, looking at his kid, gloves. The kid looks like Peter Parker, though. The kid looks like Peter Parker, though. The kid looks like Okay, I'm... The kid looks like Peter Parker, and that's perfect. He does. Okay, being the resident over-the-top spider fan, Here it comes. Well, I have some reactions to it. and First off, I'll say this. It's our first look, and we're not even sure if it's actually an intact costume. It That's looks like damage be has been, like it's been battle damaged. Yeah, oh, it, it, true, exactly. Yeah. And we haven't seen him in the mask yet. Ah, the mask is the, the important yes, thing. Yes, yeah. but and I love the original movie costume. It looked like the John Romita Sr. design. Mm-hmm. This looks like it could be either Steve Ditko or Ultimate Spider-Man design or inspired. But my one concern about getting Andrew Garfield in the mask is he's got a giant head. And I'm afraid he's going to look like a bobblehead. Oh, he'll just look more like a McFarlane Spider-Man. Well, oh, there you go. There you go. That's the yeah. second time someone's brought that up. And I'm telling you right now, if he flips a fucking web between his goddamn legs, I'm going to burn the fucking theater down. <laughs> I hate Todd McFarlane and those inane web shooter poses. Uh, what? what are you talking about? You can totally do that. Yeah, you're swinging around. Or yeah, I just, I just, just spraying like webs that. all around your body. I just, I just love that Jeff's okay with the yeah. fact that the guy can climb up yeah. a wall and do all that other shit. But when he's doing, uh, I, I but will he's not, not like, have that. What are you saying? Nope. He can't have like one leg up behind his head. No trick. Web one, 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 one foot in his mouth. We'll try to get a screening for all of us. And we'll just Please. wait to hear Vice go. Oh! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm Jeff Vice, the comics curmudgeon, and you can't do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, Todd McFarlane, I want to punch you. Whoa, Welcome come to, on, Jeff. Welcome punch to him with you love. You can't do that. In his money, I want to punch him in his punch money. Him in his money hole. <laughs> in his, in his, his money bag. <laughs> All right. That hole's full of money. No, I want to punch um, it. Um, um, by the way, we're, we're talking about the Spider-Man photos. Other photos surfaced from Spider-Man this week. What? Do tell. De- no, Dennis Leary is Captain Stacy. Oh, we finally got a look at him. Yeah. Is he dressed as a cop? He no, looks, he's dressed as a woman with a cape. He looks really young. Yeah, it's weird. Mm. Seriously, he looked... I, I was shocked at how young Dennis Leary looked in it. He well, had a SWAT vest smoking on. smoking for a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, I, the last I see him is in Rescue Me, and I, I got the HD TV, and he, he don't mm-hmm. look that young. No, but he... But, these are HD photos, and he uh, they browned up his hair. Which is which is well, that makes me feel good because I'm taking a look at this new he looks 15. This new Ant Man uh, project. Ah, I'm Ant Man. And I've got <laughs> Saturday wow. Night Live. Fans look fans look it up with fans Garrett of Morris. a certain age. Love that line. By the way. <laughs> all the all the young like Tony is going. Yeah, what? I, don't, I, don't. I just thought you guys had some good like synergy going on. I didn't know that was oh no. Line. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I don't know if it's on YouTube. I bet or, you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, John Belushi is the Hulk. It's first or second season. Yeah. Dan, Dan Aykroyd is the Flash. Garrett Morris has Ant-Man. Uh, They're all at a superhero party. You find it if you Margo, would. Is it Margot Kidder the host? Yeah. Margot Kidder was yeah. the host. And, and while, uh, while you're looking for that, find the uh, Death of Superman episode of Saturday Night Live where uh, Chris Farley was the Hulk. That's right. <laughs> Which is just beautiful. But uh, it's a party where all the comic book characters are there. <laughs> And uh, the Flash is, you know, Aykroyd, he's got a little bit. They kept saying, check out the love the handles, handles on, on the, the Flash. flash. <laughs> and, and, and Belushi walking out of the bathroom as the Hulk. Oh, don't anybody go in there for a while. <laughs> it's good stuff. Not supposed to smell like roses. Yeah. The invisible woman wants to go to the bathroom. She should lock the door. Uh, but uh, Garrett Morris in the whole costume, the old classic costume, yeah. and he's standing there, and, and I think it was Hulk comes up yeah. to him and says, uh, so, so who, who, who are you? I'm Ant Man. I'm, I'm Ant Man. <laughs> you guys, uh, this this does remind me of another um, what should have been parody of the DC characters from the late '70s. Uh, you realize the that 
challenge of the super friends or superpowers or I can't remember yes. exactly what it's called just got restored and re-released. I don't know if any of you guys managed to see this when it aired. I remember this oh, vaguely. Oh, I do. Yeah. And I caught some YouTube clips of it, and it all came crashing back horribly. It was like a celebrity roast <laughs> of the, uh, but it was with, uh, with with Adam West and not Burt Ward because they couldn't get Burt Ward. But uh, they had a Flash and a Green Lantern and Solomon mm-hmm. Grundy and and, and all these Frank other... Gorshin re- reprised his role as the Riddler. It, it's it's horrible. <laughs> it is seriously one of the most horrible things I've ever seen. I can't believe they re-released it, and I can't believe that you're going to pay twenty five to thirty bucks to own it. And we should. And I just, can't. Because you're, <laughs> yeah, your eyes won't believe it. Uh, yeah, Brian, you have it. Not yet. So, Not <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> back to Dennis Leary and Ant Man. I'm reading this uh, Ant Man and Wasp uh, short. You would make a good Ant Man. Three of three. And I'm telling you, I want to interview this guy uh, that wrote it. Uh, I want Tim Seeley. Tim Seeley. Because I get the feeling that he is casting Dennis Leary as Ant Man. Really? Because of the way it's written and the way he's drawing it. Uh, he's he's snarky like Leary. I can hear Leary's voice as I read this. I like his facial oh, okay. hair. No, he's got the mutton chops. But, but by the way, since since we're getting into this, I'm going to say this right now. Everybody keeps talking about how uh, whether Wash from Firefly is going to show up as Hank Pym in the Avengers movie. Yeah. And Edgar Wright says nobody's been cast as Ant Man. Exactly. Um, I'm starting to think that the Ant Man character in in uh, Edgar Wright's Ant-Man movie is not going to be Hank Pym. Yeah, I think it's going to be the irredeemable Ant-Man, yes. this one that we have here. He's a lot more fun, I have to say. Yes, yeah, and, and that frees up uh, frees up Wash to play Hank Pym in the Avengers movie. I mean, I'm, I want to talk to this guy. If you could get uh, use your contacts. Tim, Tim Seeley, I probably can. I'd love to interview him or just ask him simply, did you have Dennis Leary well, in mind when you were writing well, this? Well, and we have another hook to try and get him. He's the guy who writes Hack Slash. Yes. Which has been optioned for a movie. I have that news uh, coming up, as a matter of fact. But, um, I mean, you take a look at, you see, here's the irredeemable Ant-Man. Remember in, the, in that short series, yeah. he was famous for shrinking himself down and watching Ms. Marvel shower. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is in this digital heaven that uh, Hank Pym has created. And uh, he realizes that while he's there, he says he's a digital proxy. Just like on my Wii, I can make my proxy look any way I want. Mm-hmm. Then he changes himself into Ms. Marvel and says, yes, if only I had time for a shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, go and take a look at those. You can probably pick those up uh, at uh, Dr. Volts and uh, it was, it was see only if I'm a, right. It was only a three-issue miniseries. Mm-hmm. Well um, done, though, I thought. Um, but by the way, there's another cast addition to the Spider-Man movie, too. C. Thomas Howell. Yeah, what is it? Who is he playing? Do we soul know? Man. Ray is the character's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Soul Man. Oh, God. I remembered that. Oh, God. Is that Big, even available anymore? I, uh, this I'll, is the Martin Luther King episode, by yeah, the way. It is. You know what? <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if we could do Soul Man and uh, just one of the guys as a late 80s double feature, oh, that would be... Oh, God. She was hot. Heads would explode. Joyce Heiser or whoever else who played actually, the role. Yeah. She had big hoots. Um, yes. Anyway, sorry. Uh, C. <laughs> Thomas Howell is supposedly Thomas playing a character named Ray. Ray. Who, the only thing that people can think of is there's a former detective, and this has been brought up in current Spider-Man continuity, a corrupt cop named Ray Cooper, mm. who oh. was part of Gwen Stacy or uh, uh, Captain Stacy's police force, who people thought was dead, but Ray Cooper is not dead, and that's who they're thinking C. Thomas Howell. Does he become any? No, no, big no, no, bad no, no. He well, he has connections to Mysterio, uh, who Mysterio. who helped who helped fake his death, and Ray Cooper's daughter, in the comics, is Carly Cooper, who's the current girlfriend for Spider Man. <laughs> oh. Fucking freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I told you I know way too fucking much about Spider Man. He it's he, frightening. He's the first person I call when I have a question yeah. about Spider Man. I seriously. <laughs> All right, let's take a break, and uh, we've got, uh, speaking of Spider-Man, uh, we've got a review of the musical. Ooh. Uh, after this episode uh, today, I interviewed one of the uh, actors on X96 on my morning show. Interviewed one of the actors who was on Jay the Jonah play. Jameson. Well, he doesn't even actually play J. Jonah Jameson. This is how <laughs> high-ranking my show is. I got the stand-in for J. Jonah oh, Jameson. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. he, so, so this guy's only in moderate peril of getting injured. How, how big is my show, huh? Well, uh, anyway, so we'll, but we'll stick that on at the end of this podcast. So, yep. J.J. does have a big fight scene at the end of the musical. No, he doesn't. <laughs> actually, you know what stinks is we, we have a listener that's uh, seen it, too. That's seen it? Yeah. Oh, we need to get she him in here. Her, uh, Facebook. Did she saying why, why, why? Oh, that was the review. Yeah. Well, she. Let me see if I can find it. 
There's someone who disagrees with her, and I have that review Ooh. coming up. So, oh, well, all right. After these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> 